Hoi hoi hoi, it's Lewis T again, and for this video, I'm going to be doing a reading vlog, or I'd rather call it re-reading vlog, of a book written by a Filipino author. So that book is Illustrado, written by Miguel Cihuco. Hooray! So, I read this book back in 2013, and I would like to revisit it. Um, I believe this is one of the books that I included in my favorite books written by Filipino and other Asian authors for the first round. And since it is the Asian Heritage Month this May, so I decided to, you know, um, go and read this book. So it's already the 4th of May. 2020 here in the Philippines. It's already the evening, so I'd like to cap off my evening by reading Illustrado. And also, yeah, I'm gonna look forward also for the live stream of my friend Megs V in her uh, Kumu page. So while waiting for that, I'm gonna start reading this one. Hoorah! Good morning, folks. So today's May 5. 2020, and I watched my friend Max V's live stream on Kumu. So, yeah, um, I only read like until page 8, which is not yet even the end of the prologue. So far, what I'm getting is that they found uh, Miguel's mentor's body, uh, Mr. Salvador, and also. They, you know, he started discussing about what he has learned and about his works and all, and how promising Mr. Salvador is. So, we'll see how this story goes. So, today I'm just going to be doing a recap. Uh, it's already the night time, and I only read until page 32, um, because... Let me tell you, uh, the texts are like so small, so it would take time for you to read. And the kind of like the sequencing is kind of like unusual. It's not like your typical narrative, um, because basically what happens is that you know uh, Crispin Salvador was found dead, and you know Miguel uh, is trying to figure out uh, what really happened. And right now, the scenes that I'm reading is that he's kind of like flying off the Philippines. He kind of goes back, um, discussing about his life with his grandfather, um, his life with his partner. And while, you know, we get to also see some, you know, like snippets of the work by, uh, Crispin Salvador and some interviews as well and how you know Crispin uh, thinks differently so I'm definitely curious about what's gonna happen next okay and um, how Crispin thinks you know his intellect you know and how he expresses things so that's something that I'm going to look forward and I'm going to show you the next clips about what I mean about having small fonts so watch out for that so I just finished the first chapter of Illustrado and you know so far it talked about like you know his memories with his grandparents, um, Miguel's grandparents to be specific and there were scenes there that talked about the works of Crispin uh, Salvador and one thing that I just noticed is that he mentioned about Cubao being a municipality or a city. I don't recall it being a municipality or a city so I think he missed uh, you know, the town of Pateros, which is, by the way, until now, as of the moment I'm filming this video, it is still a municipality. Okay, so well, catch you folks later. Well. So today is the 8th of May technically because it's already like around 1 in the morning and technically what I've read so far would be, you know, 
uh, Miguel's uh, experience in interviewing uh, Crispin and you know um, also I read about his landing in the Philippines you know coming from Manila Metro Manila going to Bacolod searching for more like stuff from Crispin and one thing that I kind of like you know um, like struck me or one of the things that I remember that came into my head would have to be the Abu Sayyaf uh, during it was of course they were known to invade you know areas of Mindanao back in 2002 which was mentioned Miguel kind of like compare them to Ku Klux Klan in the United States and what I want to read more in this book would be the comparison between three students from DLSU ADMU or Ateneo and AMA College so looking forward to hear the um, different more scenarios in them. So, so it's the 9th of May, 2020, and I just read a hundred pages of the book. Um, so far, I would say this isn't a book that you can just simply like uh, breeze through. You really need to take your time reading it. And so far, the things that I've read would be about Crispin's life. We get to discover it you know, uh, especially about his family, especially about his father, you know, being involved in politics. And we get to hear both sides of uh, Crispin from his work. And as well as we get to meet his uh, sister, uh, Lena or Lena. And, uh, you know, about the quirkiness, you know, the... Uh, you know, the strange thoughts, uh, the way, you know, uh, Crispin thinks. And it's interesting. Uh, Crispin has, like, a nickname. It's Crispy. Wow. <laughs> if I have a brother whose name is Crispin or whatever, I'm going to be calling you Crispy. <laughs> Crispy for the win. Anyway, um, so back to seriousness. Uh, I also think about that parts that like kind of like sideways with earning ASAP who moved to California and then yeah it was just so funny about the whole porch thing he thought it was the car <laughs> so he thought the owner said Porsche but it was like porch meaning like the front part like or the part of the house not the car <laughs> so still a long way to go folks Whoa. So I just filmed today and I, of course, read more than, I think, 140 pages of Illustrato. And so far, we get to understand, like, the complex life of Crispin, you know, um, him being rich is not exactly as privileged as how, you know, some folks may think. We get to see more of his perspective uh, through his bizarre works. And we get to also see a sample of earning Isip's, um, you know, life after moving to the United States, wherein he is looking for the quote unquote international water that he's not he's no longer used to drinking uh, or getting stuff from the Philippines, and that's kind of interesting. Like there is this like thought every now and then wherein people change depending on. You know, there are some, I mean, it's, of course, definitely not applicable to all, but, you know, sometimes people change when they, you know, move somewhere else. Um, and also, it's kind of interesting how I read, you know, the arguments between Madison and Miguel. And throughout uh, the next pages that I read since my last update, what I noticed is that we get to see the story in the perspective of Miguel, and there's, like, a third person, um perspective about it so we'll see how it goes he kind of goes back to the colony and go to manila to the united states and recalls like his experience with uh crispin salvador what else can i think about that's why i recall yeah and you know after crispin's death we get to know more about lena or lena and yeah um I'm just really interested. And by the way, one of the scenes that I liked in this story was like the whole flipping of the channels and we get to see different like situations in society. I find, I found that fascinating. So 
Watch out for the next clips and we'll see how this goes. Whoa. So it's really blazing hot here in the Philippines right now and it's been a while since I gave you folks an update. So I'm already like more than halfway done already with the book and so far what I'm reading is like the um, radical thinking of Brisbane, Salvador as usual. And I also am curious about who is President Estragon and which government is he being compared to. And who else did I think about? Also, I like that conversation between, you know, um, Miguel and his friends about, you know, what it is to be Filipino. And does it mean if you're using English as a medium of language, um, does that mean you're not really being nationalistic? I think, like, at that part, what kind of, like, struck me is that it kind of makes you reflect or what you can get out of is it can make you think about what is the essence of being a Filipino. And also there were some scenes that I didn't really understand well. I think that scene we're in, um, he was in the club with some of his friends and they were like, dr you know, um, drunk already. So I guess because I'm not really, uh, person who drinks uh, hard drinks I guess I can't really connect with it but anyway um, but another cool thing about the things that I read so far would be uh, Sadie I think she's a character that adds spice to the narrative so I'd say okay to her character and I like it when they talk about the blogs going back to President Estragon um, you know with the blog post and you can see like some comment section there which can be interesting for some folks so I'll catch folks later for more updates. Wow. Sadie is a crispy and Salvador junkie hoorah! <laughs>
who wrote, you know, commentaries about the United States in relation to the 9-11 attacks. And it's up to you folks to find out whether what it is and if you folks agree upon that. So that is something that can make you think. And also another thing that, oh, there's a little bit of hair. <laughs> Other one. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, um, our protagonist, Miguel, um, first I said flip. You know, it's a thing about my hair. It's kind of like flippy, flippy and all. Anyway, <laughs> so, going back, um, Miguel looked for Florentina to ask more about, you know, of course, Crispian and to look for, you know, Crispian's alleged daughter, uh, Dulcinea. Oh, Dulcinea is like a dessert. Uh, store here in the Philippines. Super cool. Anyway, going back, uh, the thing that I found interesting is what Florentina said about, you know, sometimes in life you just need to have like a change of perspective in order for things to be better, like, and kind of compared it to a photograph. Like, sometimes we take too long in order for us to capture the perfect moment, but all we gotta do is we just probably need to change some perspective. You know, um, Crispin decided to move to the United States and be the best person that he can be so that uh, Dulcinea can look for him, but things didn't uh, stay that way. And according to Florentina, uh, Dulcinea is in Pangasinan near the Hundred Islands. So I haven't been there. Uh, hopefully one day I can visit that. Um, place I can visit the hundred islands and also another you know literally I left at this part of the story wherein they talk about earning is it <laughs> I believe some folks may find him interesting I did, do find him interesting actually and especially the thought process that he can have I find it funny and kind of <laughs> interesting <laughs> so there was a scene about um, you know his um, I think his health is already, you know, of course, uh, getting older and gaining weight can affect someone's health. Okay. Um, and then there was a part wherein he visited a doctor and then the doctor told him that he can only eat things that swims. So Erning didn't visit the doctor again. And um, what happened is that the doctor decided to visit Erning, is it? Uh, because they're just neighbors and you know the maid so uh was the one who gre uh, greeted him and approached him and said like he's in the pool swimming and then the doctor said wow that was cool uh because he thought that you know earning is getting you know a better uh physical lifestyle you know getting into swimming and all those exercise activities Truth is the maid told the doctor that earning is it was in the pool because he is teaching a pork how to swim. Okay, and here's another one. Way back when, you know, Erling Isip was in the United States working as a security guard, uh, apparently there was a thief uh, inside uh, the uh, grocery that he was working for, and then they said, like, lock all the exits. And then he and his cousin told their boss, like, the thief or the burglar, uh, was able to escape and then they asked how did that happen well they answered because the burglar or the thief you know left the entrance <laughs> i'll just catch you folks soon <laughs> so i'm already in the eighth chapter of illustrado and so far you know for some reason the way i understand chris pin is like he challenges the concept of what it is to be Filipino. It is something that it would make you ponder about what it is. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I see that, you know, Miguel is searching for Dulcinea. And at the same time, he's also searching for um, Mr. Avellanada. And also in the past pages, you can also see you know, how evident it is that, you know, um, religion uh, influences, like, uh, governance uh, here in the Philippines. So, because I'm, like, somewhere in 240-something pages already, it's time for me to pick my next read with the help of... ASMR, ASMR. <laughs> my fake jar. So, let's see. And... 
I'm going to pick here the next book that I'll be reading after Illustrato. So it will be a surprise. Definitely, this is the first time, um, you know, that I'll know what it is. So let's just dive into it. I'm going to put it here. Trust me, there's no cheating involved here. Okay. Oh, this one was the previous book. Uh, this was the last book I read prior to. Uh, let's see if it's I don't know if you see it well. Dial 99 or dial 999. Okay, so it's still here, but I already read that. So let's pick on the next book. I <laughs> wonder what it is gonna be. I'm looking at the camera. What is this? Oh, okay. So it's ebook time for me. It's another book by written by an Asian author. What a coincidence. So I don't know if it's being seen. If hold on. Let me just try to put that out. So that's Loved Walked In by Melissa De La Cruz. Actually, this is the first book uh, before it belonged to me, so I'm looking forward to read this one. <laughs> I just realized I wrote the wrong name of the author. It's actually Marissa De Los Santos, who is the author of that book, and yeah, um, but they're both Filipino, so, or Filipino decent. I believe they are both Filipino Americans, but yeah, they're a Filipino decent, so. <laughs> So it's May 16, 2020, and I'm about to take my shower. Just want to give you another update. So I finished uh, chapter 9. I'm about to head towards the last chapter. And guess what? Sadie and Miguel went back together. Hoorah! So last thing that they went to was that they tried, you know, um, going somewhere, but they caught in the flood. And, you know, there was a scene already that they were kind of rescued by police people. Um, and another thing that kind of like is interesting in this after the things that I read would have to be about a girl who is the uh, grandchild of Erning Isip and the views about politics because, you know, if things just go over again and again, you know, things are going to repeat in the narrative. Um, when a president, you know, a head of state decides to or does something that is not exactly appealing to its people, people rally, there's always like people revolution, and that's what happens every time. Actually, Gurley ended up uh, being a president, and there was this part there that you know the punchline, and I guess Gurley was also ousted. <laughs> So I'm already done filming. Unfortunately, something happened along the way. The camera got broken. I don't know what happened, but I was still able to film. Um, I just need to put it on top of a flat surface in order for me to be able to take some clips. Now I just need to figure out how 
I can permanently make this work. I can't go to any repair shop at all because of the quarantine. And yeah, if there's a will, there's a way. There will be videos for sure. So far the best. And I will continue finishing Illustrato. And once I'm done, I'm going to let you know my synopsis. Hooray! So I just finished Illustrato by Miguel Cejuco and oh my gosh, like that ending, you know, it just kind of like, I guess, tries to talk about the things that you may have and you never know until when will be that your last moment. And that epilogue, oh gosh, honestly, I'm still kind of confused whether is that a mystery that, you know, Crispin Salvador is still alive or if that is actually Miguel. So... Overall, the book has like, you know, some sort of an interweaving kind of style. You know, it's not exactly like this is it and then there's like this end point. Like that's this, um, it's not like typically what you read. Um, we're in, there's the beginning, there's a rising action, there's no more. There's like, kind of like, um, kind of like switches, you know, kind of like an interweave of all stories. So yeah, overall for this reread, I realized I'd like to give this 3.75 out of 5 stars. So feel free to comment down below your thoughts about Illustrato. So I guess that's about it. If you folks like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon somewhere down there to keep yourselves posted about my videos. Also be putting down the links and social media handles, so feel free to check me out and follow me there as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let us continue seeking for wisdom and unleash the reader in you. Bye, y'all.